Thank you, Lord, for the saints of God, the people of God, the holy ones of God. Uh, in the house of God today, Lord, I pray that you speak to us by your spirit, that your will may be done. Thank you for being such a wonderful heavenly father. Thank you for giving your wonderful son, Jesus, who suffered for us that we might live. And thank you, Lord, for sending your wonderful Holy Spirit, the triune God, blessing us, helping us, Lord. Thank you so much, for. We ask uh, that you anoint, and we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. If you could agree, would you say amen? Amen. 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 All right. So, if you would turn with me to my text, please. The text for today will be Matthew chapter 23. And we're going to discuss some of the things that Jesus uh, that Jesus spoke. Jesus, uh, when he spoke these things, he's the only being in the universe, including the Trinity, okay? We know the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Well, even, even the Trinity, there's only one unique person like him. The only one Jesus, because he happens to be God, and yet he also happens to be human. Remember, that's why he was born. The Bible says he was born of a virgin. And he was incarnate. He was, he, he was made flesh. And he lived like a man, powerless, just like a man, for about 30 years. And then the Holy Spirit said, okay, you're old enough. And there's a reason why it happened at the age of 30. If you go back into the Old Testament, it tells us why. And then the, the Bible says he was baptized by the prophet John. And then it says that the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove. And then after that, we read about the first miracle that he did. He never did any miracles before that because he had no power, just like humans, being a human. Okay. But yet he's lived a sinless life. And that had to be or he would not be the God's sacrificial lamb. He couldn't have gone to a cross to take your sin and mine to take the sin of the world. So he had to live a perfect life, a sinless life, which only Jesus, the, the only man that has ever done that. So anyway, after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, he received power. And then he was able to do miracles. And even the miracles that he did, he did by the leading and the guidance of God the Holy Spirit. Not on his own. I've heard preachers all my life uh, from time to time say, well, Jesus was God and he could do this and he could do that. Really, it's not, that's not exactly true. He could only do things as the Holy Spirit led him to do those things. Okay, because he left his power, I guess, in heaven with, with, with the Father when he was born of a, of a virgin. So he ministered as a prophet. And the people thought he was another prophet like Elijah, okay, like Moses. Moses said, there's coming another prophet like myself. God had shown him some of those things. He had future to Moses' time. So Jesus ministered and did everything by the power of the Holy Spirit, the way we do it. Except the Bible says he had the spirit without measure. We have a little measure of this and a little measure of that. Well, we have get things from God. When we're born again, we get spiritual gifts from God. Spiritual abilities, if you will. And then there are those that God has called uh, to minister like the apostles. And some of those uh, New Testament uh, prophets and, and, and evangelists. Like you see, you see uh, the first martyr, Stephen. And you see Philip, the evangelist. They were able to do miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. So some people have been called into that miraculous area of ministry. You don't see that much today. But whether you see that level of power or not, we all have the power of the Holy Spirit residing in us. That's how we live the Christian life. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we can't live this Christian life. It's too hard. Somebody says something to us and we want to sock them. Somebody says something that we don't like about us and we want to say something we don't like about them. That's, that's called getting in the flesh. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, He gives us power to control ourselves. Self-control, one of the gifts, one of the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. So the Holy Spirit works with us and helps us and keeps us and guides us. So Jesus, Jesus is our example. Okay, so Jesus... Working with those those 12 men, young men that he called to be his disciples who later became apostles. The word apostle means a sent one. They were sent by him. To go. He told them, go into all the world, the known world, and preach the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. 
So they went out. They were sent, and we use the word apostle, okay? So, and, and they were just filled with power. The Bible says in the last chapter of the book of Acts that the Lord went with them as they went out preaching everywhere, confirming the word that they preached with signs and wonders, okay? One of the newer translations says with the attesting signs. They had all of this power. So Jesus was preparing those guys, and he taught them for about three years. Somebody said, well, some of those guys never went to college, never went to school. They had the best instructor that ever was. Jesus was teaching them right there. At the campfire time, he was telling them stories, explaining, opening up their minds. I mean, wow, what a mentor he was to them. He was having these guys fed. He was taking care of them. They had no job outside of following Jesus. And he met all of their, what we call creature needs. He took care of them. All right. So he's teaching them here. And now he's telling his disciples when we get to the, to the 23rd chapter of the book of Matthew. He began, to he began to tell them something about future events. And uh, one of the, you know, if you look at the story of the Jewish people, and a lot of times the word, the, the name is just Jerusalem, is used, in, you know, in place of speaking of the Jewish people. A lot of things happen. When they obeyed God, when the Jewish people, the people of God, obeyed God, they prospered and he kept them safe. When they disobeyed God, they, they, they were attacked by a foreign power. And when they, they stayed disobedient, the foreign power would come in and dispossess them. And then eventually the Lord would bring them back. And that's their history. If you read the book of Judges, it's, it's a hard read because they're always going from obeying God and deliverance to disobeying God and judgment. Obeying God and deliverance, God, they would cry out to God. They would repent. God has a tender heart. He would forgive. He'd restore. He'd bless. And then by and by they would forget and go back and, and, and disobey God again, blatantly disobeyed God. And, and there came, you know, there, there came over the hills the armies of, of those, those nations around them and conquered them, and that was their history. So now something big was really going to happen to the nation of Israel because now Messiah was there, and they were about ready to reject him in person. Imagine the God of the universe. Did you know, I've, I've said this, a couple of thousand times at least. Jesus is the one person in the Godhead that created the universe. That's right. That was given to him by the Father. The Father gave him the power to create this universe. Somebody might ask, well, was there another universe before Jesus created this universe? I don't know. The Bible doesn't tell me. Who knows what else is out there that we don't know anything about? Okay, there's this, God lives in the spiritual realm, and as we read the Bible, we find out that there are angels up there, there are creatures of all create, created beings of all different types and sizes, all different, so I personally believe, I've said this uh, maybe not 2,000 times, maybe only 1,000, I believe the universe is filled with life, and life forms and civilizations. I believe that because God is a creating God, He's a creative God. And, uh, but I believe there's only one earth and there's only one Jesus and there was only one cross. Amen. So there's something special about the human race. For God so loved the world that he, was a, that, that he decided to give his own son. Okay, so then he became like one of us. He became like one of his creation. And that's why today the earth is special. Human beings are special in the universe. God became one of us. He identified so much. And then he says, we're not just adopted. We're not just part of God, like the angels belong to God, but we're the family of God. We call Him Father. We can call Him Father. Abba in the Greek, Father. So we're family, and we're going to live like God's, not being God, but like God's forever and ever in His house. Wow. So Jesus, being God, having the knowledge that the Holy Spirit was imparting to Him, He's now going to pass on that knowledge to His disciples. I've given you all this time to find Matthew 23. Have you found it yet? All right. I just want to make sure you went. You found Matthew 23. We're going to read verses 37 through 39. And then I want to apply this scripture uh, to today. Jesus said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Notice he's talking about Jerusalem. The one who kills the prophets. So he's using, as I said, the term Jerusalem to talk about the Jewish people. He says, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together. As a hen gathers her chicks 
under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I say to you, you shall see me no more till you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So he, he was looking at Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit had showed him that in the year 70 A.D., the Roman legions would come under the Roman general Titus and just level the city. And Josephus, the, 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 the historian, the most prominent historian that records what took place, he says about one million Jews died in the siege of Jerusalem. And it was leveled. The temple was just leveled. Stone, every stone was, was, was taken down. I mean, it was a horrible time. If you read with the things that Josephus said, I mean, it, it was horrible, the things that happened uh, to the Jewish people. And, and he said, how often? How often? But you wouldn't. Okay. And then he used the story about the hen, the way a hen would protect her chicks. I like the way the Lord gives the scriptures that we can understand. So, he said that concerning the people of God in that day. So, I remember years ago, I heard a, I heard a, a sermon of a preacher that took these scriptures and related it to the church. So, I copycatted some of that stuff. Okay? And I want to relate it to you. Uh, can those scriptures apply to the church in America or to the, to the United States of America? You know that the United States of America is a miracle. There's never been a nation like it before it. There hasn't been one like it since we became a nation in 1776. And if you read our American history the, about the founding fathers, a lot of them were Christian, uh, Christian men. My God, they had high intellect. Guys were bright. They were being used of God to create a nation whose foundation, whose constitution is in line with the Word of God. Did you know our constitution is based on the Bible? It's based on the Word of God. Do you think that's an accident? Of course not. It's, it's, it's by God, and that's why the powers that be in our government now, many of the powers that are against Christianity and the things of God, they want to tear down the Constitution and rewrite it, leaving those godly principles out. That's why I say the Constitution was written in stone, and I like it in stone, so it cannot, in other words, so it cannot be changed. It's fine just the way it is. Don't let anybody uh, tell you that we need to rewrite our Constitution because this, that, and the other. No, nah, we, we don't need to rewrite it. I think we got it right the first time because God was involved. And as a result, many millions around the world for the last 200 plus years have heard about Jesus Christ because the missionaries from the U.S. went into all the world. I remember the first time I read that they, the, whoever was writing the article, then I read another article years later, and another one. And the numbers were about the same. They were saying that about 80% of the converts in the world were coming as a result of missionaries and evangelists sent out from the United States to all the world. That's changed. My God, for the last I don't know how many years, I've been reading now that the world is sending missionaries and evangelists to America because America has gotten so far from God. It's amazing how the tables turn. But the Constitution has not been changed. Thank God. So I want to relate uh, some of these scriptures to us because things are happening around us. And, and too much of the time, uh, I think believers are in la-la land. We're like, uh, has anybody ever heard of the ostrich? You all don't know what an ostrich is, huh? Everybody knows about the ostrich that puts his head in the ground. You know, one thing I don't know, maybe Pastor Mieko knows, she went to college. Pastor Mieko, why does the ostrich stick his head in the ground? I mean, it sees danger coming, and you know, that's a big bird. And uh, if the lion's coming, let's say a lion, I don't, know if I don't know if they have those in Africa where there's lions, but anyway, if it sticks his head in the ground, the lion can still eat you because most of you sticking out where it can kill you. So I don't know, you know, if you stick your head in the ground, maybe they don't see the danger, you know. I'm not going to look. And uh, you're still going to get eaten. So I don't know why it does it. But it seems like many believers are like the ostrich. They got their head in the ground. Ah, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to. So, you know, we're asleep. We're asleep. So part of the preacher's job 
is, is to find out from the Lord, Lord, what's happening, so I can relate this to the people. So we share with you a lot of the good principles of the Word of God. Once in a while, we'll preach on hell. I'll tell you that there's a place you don't want to go, so be careful. And sometimes we want to share with you some of the things Jesus said concerning the future, especially things that impact us right now today. Because the way things are isn't going to last forever. The tribulation period has to come. It's called the 70th week of Daniel, and 69 weeks of the 70 weeks ended at the crucifixion. So it's been about 2,000 years, and God's waiting to release that last week of, of years, which is seven years. And we just happen to know that the tribulation period is going to last seven years. So God's waiting to release that. It's like the bullfight. That, that, that toro, that bull is back there waiting to get out. And then when they open the gate, you ever watch one of those bulls come out there? Oh, muscle burn, big horns. It's ready to attack anything. If Godzilla was, was, was there in the ring, it would attack Godzilla. That thing comes out and ready to go. So that's the 70th week of Daniel. A lot's going to happen. And God is holding that back because the church is here. He's dealing with the church. Those 70 weeks of Daniel's, which was, it, it's 490 years total, 70 times 7, that was written concerning the Jewish nation, not the church. So at the end of 483 years, God put a stop to it. He's been dealing with the, with, with the church, with the Gentile, the church.